Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, hundreds of men making a public statement that enough is enough. Will it be what many envisioned as a key to breaking a stronghold over our nation? Meantime, over in Moores Island, reports of a tornado touching down, backed by evidence of destruction on buildings. We're there tonight. And welcome to the Panama Canal. Why you should visit. The answer ahead. Stay close. The Bahamas Tonight Sunday edition starts right now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. It is great to have you with us for the Sunday edition. I'm Clint Watson reporting tonight. It's not the usual picture we're accustomed to seeing. Hundreds of men marching through the streets of the capital today, making a strong statement against crime. They came from a cross section of organizations and church denominations. Their theme, reaching, restoring and empowering men for positive action. Our Giovanni Stewart has more on the event organized by Bahamas Faith Ministries that many deem will reverse a negative cycle in our country now that the men of the nation have collaboratively taken a stand and made some public declarations. Following a march, hundreds of men took over Rawson Square Sunday afternoon to make a statement against crime, violence, and antisocial behavior. Their goal to galvanize men and boys and begin the mental transformation needed to get the Bahamas' social order back on course. The National Men's Empowerment Series was spearheaded by Bahamas Faith Ministries senior pastor, Dr. Miles Monroe. You know, we are about to turn 40 as a country, and we have decided that the men of this country are gonna take their community back. There are very few men that are trying to steal the country. Good men today, standing behind me by the hundreds, who have decided we are going to stand up and take our nation back. Dr. Monroe says following the three-day event, they intend to present Parliament with a list of strategic recommendations that they hope will be implemented. ZNS News got feedback from a range of men who took part in the march and rally and told us why it was important for them to be there. I thought it was a good idea to let the boys see men acting responsibly, men acting together, men worshipping God and showing that we care about our country. We care about the future that they are going to inherit. Oh, he's a young boy. Masons used to be the men of, of the country, respectable men, you know, and everybody looked at Masons to be our leaders. And somewhere down the line, you know, we fell down. And me as a young man coming up and as a master Mason, I felt that it's very important for us to get to our youth, to show our youth that we are still leaders. I heard about it on the Junkanoo show, talk show yesterday with Darren uh, Bastian and, and uh, Eric uh, Hall and those. And I said, you know what, this is something that we must do. I mean, every man in the community should be out here today because we have challenges with our young boys, our young men, and we have to, we have to fess up. Then some of the boys had their say. It's and important to me so I, so, I could, so I could learn to become a, re, a real man and I can learn my purpose so when I get older I don't, I don't be on the and street I smoking and, I, and so I just say to so stop, stop the violence. I'm here the to understand my role as a young man and trying to understand why I am, I am here for God and of materialism. just trying to fulfill my a purpose in life. Organizers hope to make the march and rally an annual event Meantime, the National Men's Empowerment Series continues at the Diplomat Center on Monday morning. Reporting from downtown Nassau, for ZNS News, I'm Giovanni Stewart. Great story there, Giovanni. Well, police need your help in locating several suspects, all wanted for murder. The first one is 24-year-old Andre Wallace, alias Muggs of First Street. Wallace is wanted for a murder that happened on Thursday, September 15th, in the Palmetto Avenue area off East Street. Wallace is medium build with a dark brown complexion and stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall. The second male police want to question is 20-year-old Jarian Pyfram of Moss Town, Exuma. Pyfram is wanted for questioning in connection with the stabbing death of a 17-year-old female in Moss Town, Exuma. The incident happened on August 12th. Pyfram is of a medium build and a dark brown complexion. And the third man is 22-year-old Ormond Leon of Homestead Street off Wolf Road. Leon is wanted for a murder that happened on July 10th near the Wilson Track area. He is of slim build, stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall and has a dark brown complexion. Anyone with information on these three wanted men is asked to contact police or the Central Detective Unit at 911-919 or 328-TIPS. 
In two separate incidents, police are questioning four men after they were found in possession of illegal firearms. In the first incident, three men are in police custody after they were found in possession of a handgun and large quantity of ammunition, along with a quantity of suspected ecstasy. Officers of the Mobile Division arrested the men around 640 yesterday morning at a residence at Woods Alley off Market Street. In the second incident, officers of the Drug Enforcement Unit arrested a 21-year-old male of Johnson Road after they conducted a search of his goal. 2000 Honda Accord and discovered a handgun and ammunition. Now officers arrested the man around 10.30 p.m. on Saturday at Johnson Road, Fox Hill. Police are looking into both matters. Well, two men aged 38 and 26 years are in police custody after they were caught stealing metal pipes from the well fields of Frank Watson Boulevard. Officers from the Western Division arrested the men sometime around 10:15 a.m. on Saturday. Now, according to police reports, officers of the Western Division acting on information went to the well fields where they found the men digging pipes out of the ground, the property of water and sewage. Charges have been filed against the men. Police are continuing their investigations. Well, Morris Islanders are, are counting their blessings after they say a tornado touched down in their community in the early morning hours. You can see roof damage to St. Matthew's Native Baptist Church in the bite on your screen now. That church also lost parts of the roof. Chief Counselor Tommy Dame says it was a frightening experience as a number of buildings, homes and property were damaged. He says a resident was also injured during the ordeal. About 45 to uh, just about all of the, the St. Matthew's Church, about 50% of the roof is gone, is blown away. Roof and um, shingles are blown off and the trees are down all over the place and the breeze are flying, causing um, damage to driving homes and, and other business places. The uh, most troubling story, a lady by the name of Almeida Mintz, she said to me that she was awake at this time and Tornado came into one window and went out to the other. With um, debris some, um, flying through the house, she was also hit with a spray can, almost knocked unconscious. And um, we're happy that no, um, no life was lost. Um, people of Moors Island, we still believe in God and we, we pray and we thank God that there was no life lost. Now, what makes matters even worse, Dame says residents were still cleaning up after Hurricane Irene, and now they have this to deal with. Right now, we haven't completed our cleanup efforts from after the hurricane. We be going on a slow process as far as that is concerned. Poisons got together and they start to clean the communities and the streets and stuff like that and clean the personal yard, but the island itself still needs them to be clean. And after the hurricane, we, we still need to be cleared. So that's from the hurricane now into the tornado is make it worse for us. 